This music, when you hear it, you know exactly what it means and how to feel. It's music that's designed to rouse our inner patriotism. There's nothing ambiguous about it. Most music is ambiguous in its intent. Perhaps you've heard the boldface term nationalism as it relates to classical music. There's patriotic music, which has a very specific emotional intent. And then there is this nationalistic music, which is less direct. So what are most people talking about when they refer to nationalism in music? What makes a piece of music by Copland specifically American? What is it about Dvorak's music that's quintessentially Czech? Sibelius in Finland, Elgar in Great Britain. When musicians talk about nationalism, they're talking about music that has a certain flavor of a, of a culture or a nation, whether it's in the harmony or in the rhythm or in the orchestral texture. Birthplace um, of where the composers are from, their motherland, landscape. So I think it actually comes from something outside the music at first, and then we start to think about details. There are a number of really well-known examples of nationalism in classical music. Finlandia by Sibelius, Moldau. Some references to nationalism appear in the titles of the pieces themselves. Schumann's Rhenish Symphony, or Mendelssohn's Italian Symphony, or Mozart's, let's say, Prague, or whatever like that. And there are examples of nationalism outside of Western classical music. The song is a folk song from the 1800s, Mo Li Hua, which translates directly to jasmine flower. It is one of the first Chinese folk songs to reach and be known outside of China in the Western world. In fact, Puccini quoted this in the opera Turandot. Sometimes composers reference foreign places and cultures in their music. <laughs> Nice suit. If you talk about a, a piece that's been appropriated for every different type of event and culture, it's Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. But if you look at the historical context of Beethoven writing the piece with Schiller's libretto, you come to the Ode to Joy and there's the tenor variation that happens in a different key. Um, in a different time signature. And there's a lot of thought around how this is actually a very strong hint to Turkish music. And this is really significant because Austria and Turkey and Germany and Turkey had been at war for over a century. And so this was Beethoven maybe poking at Schiller's theme of this ode to joy, this theme of brotherhood, to think of what is the other side of this conversation. Who are we excluding in this? And I think that that is so important because Beethoven was thinking of the political ramifications of this piece. You then begin to understand a different culture with a different type of empathy because you've put yourself in that place. And that's something that music does in a really powerful and unifying way. What's so powerful about nationalism in art music is the ambiguity. Composers draw from folk music, their natural surroundings, and other sources to create something that captures their experience of place. And it's through nationalism that music connects us with a shared cultural history.